his side In the darkness is the light Out of the shadows of my life In the darkness is the light Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the So Weird Podcast. Tonight, we are talking about Season 2, Episode James Gar. And as your host today, I'm taking over for Zach. I'm Kat. I'm Kathy. I'm Emily. And I'm Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy back with us tonight. Woo-hoo. Thank you. I'm glad mm-hmm. to be back. Glad to have you back. So tonight's episode is probably one of the most overlooked episodes from seasons one and two of So Weird, but it's my personal favorites. Would somebody like to give us a summary of this one? Basically, Carrie like gets sick and has tonsillitis, and so the gang is in a hospital. And then, of course, they end up meeting a gentleman who is in the hospital, and he is kind of strange to be. And so she ends up finding out from his doctor that he is going to be sent out into the world. He was put under cryostasis and is now going to be sent out into the world and she um to deal with that issue of you know how is he going to be taken care of and what's going to happen to him yeah so for this week's monster of the week it's more about tackling the question of do human beings have souls what happens when we die is the human body all there is to us or is there more? And I really love this episode because it reminds me a lot of the book, A Ring of Endless Light by Madeline Langle. I'm talking about the book, not the terrible Disney movie adaptation because that just butchered all the themes of the novel. <laughs> so I love how in this episode, we start out lighthearted with Carrie checking in at the hospital and threatening to cough on people as retaliation for Jack kind of teasing him. (laughs) And when asking, when asked what the problem was by one of the nurses, he responds, overprotective parents. I love that line. So in the hospital, we really come across two patients and it's interesting that both Jack and Fee are able to find a friend in this hospital. First with Jack, with this old man, who they kind of cut in line earlier in the episode who's coughing and the old man's so nice and friendly like oh you go ahead you still have time because he's been in and out of the hospital with leukemia which brings us back to one of our favorite people somebody else want to talk about this connection so uh jack as he's talking with this man he discovers that he has leukemia and um because of that, he opens up about his relationship with Gabe, with Mr. DeFranco, that's the man's name, and um, it's just really sweet to see Jack talking about Gabe again and um, how much he loves her, and he shows uh, Mr. DeFranco the angel necklace. It's a nice moment. That's one of my favorite scenes because you can tell just how much Jack cares about Gabe. I was thinking about her the way he rubs the necklace. While talking to Mr. DeFranco, it's so Mm -hmm. sweet. The older guy, um, he said that he had myeloma, which is a form of leukemia, but that was the word that Jack recognized that Gabe had. So I wonder if that was the same. I'm unsure, though. But um, And I like that her angel music played in the background during that scene. That was pretty. Oh, I didn't even notice that. that. (laughs) That's cool. I hope I'm not wrong. <laughs> but um, it sounded like the same music from the Angel episode to me. Mm-hmm. Like it kind yeah. of tuned that, that little tune. It was really pretty. I also like how Jack admits um, to Mr. DeFranco because Jack becomes really good friends with him. And he's feeling mm-hmm. really down because Mr. DeFranco's basically, you know, saying I'm going to die soon. And then I like that Jack admits that. Like, he doesn't really believe in all the strange things, but he does believe in miracles. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite lines from this episode, because you wouldn't expect that from Jack, but I think that's part of what makes Jack such a well-written character, and that while he won't believe in the paranormal, he'll still believe that good things happen, and he kind of has that innocence about him. Yeah. And it also kind of plays on um, Patrick Levis as a Christian. I know he did an interview during the years run with the Catholic magazine where he talked about his faith and how Gabe's angel was kind of a nice tie-in that was intentionally done for his character 
because he was such a strong Christian. Oh, wow. Oh, I believe that for sure. When he says that line, I feel like I'm seeing Patrick saying it. Um, yeah. Talking about miracles. And while Jack is off making friends with this patient, Fiona accidentally befriends another. While they're in Carrie's room, Fee is sent to go get towels, and she finds that Carrie is sharing a room with a man who's just kind of laying in bed, and he refers to himself in the third person a lot. Sam Scar is not disturbed, does not rest, and it's kind of creepy and robotic like. Sophie gets caught talking to James Gar, and his doctor walks in, tells me that she shouldn't be talking to him. And Fiona does a little bit of snooping and finds out that he had his body be frozen until they were able to physically heal his body, but he hasn't been the same since he's been woken up. Yeah, and they froze him because. Well, one, it was an experiment they were trying out, but he volunteered, James Gar, because he had a brain tumor. Yeah, so, it was an inoperable brain tumor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, like, you know, when I'm rewatching it and I don't remember much, I'm thinking, like, why would he volunteer to do that? But then in the episode, he says um, he knew he would die if he didn't, and he had nothing to lose, Aww. which is, that's pretty sad. Yeah. Yeah, and one of the most touching parts is that before he went in to be frozen, he gave the doctor a photograph of him with his class because he was a teacher. And that photograph was supposed to represent all the things that were important to him. So I guess it's why he wanted to keep living so that he could continue to be a teacher and touch hundreds of lives. Mm -hmm. But when he woke up, as referring to himself in the third person, he, had, he can remember being a teacher, but there's no real connection, no real passion for it anymore. And he tells yeah. them to just throw it out. Yeah, it's really sad. Um, Mr. DeFranco was on the phone. Do you remember like when Jack first walks up to the, the candy machine? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's like talking on the phone. And I thought it was funny. I wrote down the joke he said. He's like talking to his granddaughter on the phone. And he goes, $2? Who does that tooth fairy think she is? Tad Raxel? He's like, get some of that tooth fairy gold. Um, anyway, it was really funny that he made a Tad Raxel re reference, and that probably was what caught Jack's ear to like pay attention and kind of be nosy in that his conversation, as well as bumping into him earlier, right? <laughs> but um, that was crazy, like the Tad Raxel reference. Yeah, yeah. So one of my favorite things about seasons one and two is all the in references and the side characters that are introduced for an episode or two are never forgotten. Yeah. yeah, and he made um, a reference as well, like, do you remember when he did the magic trick for Jack, like, with the candy bar? And then he goes, um, you know, it's easier to laugh, like, he was saying, like, when he caught that it was easier to laugh at the, you know, the hospital humor, but then he says that the soul has to go to a better place, and when he does the magic trick, he says um, that the soul goes from here. And so he was saying that basically that was the reference to the whole entire episode because as he's mm -hmm. about to leave, he goes, well, got to go, kid. I'm just following the soul. And then mm -hmm. he walks away. So it was like a reference to the whole episode. I thought that was really cool. That's a good catch. I didn't think of it like that. That reminds me of this scene when Fiona is talking to James Gar's doctor. It's probably one of my favorite parts of this episode where she asks her, like, isn't there anything you can do? Because they're getting ready to release James Gar tomorrow, and he's going to be thrown out on the streets with no real sense of self, no family, no place to live. And James Gar seems so cool with it. Either James Gar will live or James Gar will die. Mm -hmm. And Fiona has this great little speech about how she believes that there's this spark in people and that you could call it a spirit, a soul, whatever you want, but it's what makes a person a person. And James Gar was just missing that. So the surgery wasn't really a success, but unfortunately there was yeah. nothing else they could do. Mm -hmm. 
she, the doctor says that, you know, it's not, she failed. And James Gar is like, no, you didn't, I'm alive. But you know, with the doctor, uh, she's an interesting character because at first, like, it seems like she's kind of cold or mean, but, like, she did have good intentions and she is, like, distressed about <laughs> what happened. That was kind of like, I thought it was really crazy how she broke her patient doctor confidentiality just because Fee was like, trust me. <laughs> like, you know, because when Fee first goes back there. Oh, in the freezer? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, she's like, get out of here. I'll have you arrested. Fee doesn't even care. She's like, cusses her out. Like, what did you do to him? Like, doesn't even care. She's going to get arrested. Yeah, that seems so, it's so odd to me. Like, Fee is acting... Like, I, I know it's in Fee's character to question adults, but she's acting a little too much for me out of, you know, out of not knowing that much so far. Yeah, and I think it's kind of a nice tie-in, the way the episode is structured, in that as Jack is dealing with finding out that Mr. DeFranco thinks that he's going to die that night, Fee finds out that James Gar is going to be thrown out into the streets the next day. So around the same time, they're both upset about the fates of their friends. And uh, they see Molly come into the hall. And I think it's such a nice moment when they meet in Carrie's room at first. And they're both upset over what's happening to their friends. And as they're moving out into the hallway, they hold hands for a moment. And then they talk to Molly about it. And Fee asks Molly, what do you do when you want to help somebody so badly? but you can't. And Molly tells her, even if you can't help somebody, you can still love them, and that matters. That is my all-time favorite So Weird quote, and I think it's a really good way to look at life in general. Mm -hmm. Agree, that's beautiful. Completely agree. And it just goes to show that Molly Phillips is the best TV mom who has ever been <laughs> written. I love her so much. Every Amen. mother's day, like, I want to honor Molly Phillips more than I want to honor my mom. <laughs> I agree with you. And I'm right there with you. Like, totally. Absolutely. <laughs> I love her character. And it's made me love Mackenzie Phillips even more. Yeah. I just, I love this episode, how they decided to do, uh, like, a parallel with Fee's situation and Jack's situation. And they eventually mixing together. Because they could have just stuck with, you know, just James Gar. But I feel like Mr. DeFranco is, like, equally as important as James Gar. Yeah. And it's kind of refreshing because Jack is so concerned with going on with his friend that, you know, Fee, there's not that Jack and Fee moment where Fee tells Jack the theory and then Jack shoots it down or whatever. Like... They're both too concerned with what's going on to argue about, you know, I guess the technicalities of what's happening with their friends. So, yeah, true. Um, I wrote down, like, I think it was during that scene that Kat was saying where Fee is so concerned about James Gar leaving. I wrote down, like, oh, Fee is so caring. And then in the next scene, it shows Jack, like, being so caring also. I'm like, oh, so is Jack. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the things that I really love about the Jack B dynamic is that they're not constantly at each other's throats. You have some episodes where they're bickering back and forth like in Troll. And then you have episodes like this where they've got each other's backs. And I think the fact that they hold hands for like a total of two seconds in the episodes and it's so subtle that like you blink and you miss it. But I love that it's there. Because it shows how close they are. Yeah, it's a really selfless episode for the, for both of their characters because they really have, like, no control. They're just kind of, like, helpless in both of their situations. It works itself out. <laughs> um, did you guys notice that um, the doctor, Dr. Rooney, which I was sad because we actually don't know who that actress is. Unfortunately, um, all of the copies of this episode, the credits are cut up. Uh, unless I'm wrong, I couldn't find who she was. I, I know who she is. X-Files fans know who she is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I was going to say. She's, who uh, is she? 
She's Scully's mom in the X Files. That is what she's known for. I thought she looked familiar. You're so right. I've seen every episode of X Files, and that just oh my god, that's so. <laughs> right. Oh my god, it's her mom. I was like, why does she look so familiar? Because it's cut off. It's not on IMDb. I couldn't find it anywhere. Just googling. I'm like, who is this woman? It's not on yeah. IMDb. They so have everything. Know. It's not listed I in her credits either. So it's not not only yeah, is it not on the episode page, it's not listed in her credits, but it's definitely her. Why not? Is she ashamed of Thank so weird? She that. has no reason to be. <laughs> she should be proud of so weird. We should tweet her. Maybe it's just missed. Yeah, crazy. But we thank you so much for that because I was stressing over that hard earlier. I'm like, yeah. I cannot figure out who she is. So in the James Gar episode, Dr. Rooney had actually mentioned that James Gar was the first human patient that had volunteered for her. And if you notice, when Fee first looks through the window, there's a chimpanzee named Larry and a border collie named Shasta. <laughs> um, and I looked at the date. Um, I was trying to see the date of suspension that James Gar actually went into cryostasis. And what I could make out was nine sixteen eighty four. I hope that's correct. Wow. But um, yeah. So I think that was when the little picture of him and with his little students was taken in nineteen eighty four. Good catch. I've always I'm nosy. Thought, <laughs> I I've always thought that it was interesting that they actually um, had an episode about cryostasis and cryogenics because. Uh, there's been a long-standing rumor, which is actually a myth, that Walt Disney was cryogenically frozen. <laughs> that he's not actually mm -hmm. buried anywhere. So I just think it's interesting that they actually let this uh, episode plot go through. <laughs> kind of funny. Yeah, I like that. So Weird has episodes focused on the paranormal, but then they also have episodes focused on the weird sides of science. Between this and the episode about cloning... Mm -hmm. I think it's another cool facet of the show. Mm -hmm. And the question of the soul, that was really like a beautiful question in this episode, you know? Yes, I love, love, love it when kids shows go there into those deep philosophical questions about life, the universe, and everything. Thinking about things. Yeah. And not enough shows yeah. allow kids to do that. And so they're just talking down and dumb down but never so weird yeah they showed a dead body in this episode for like three seconds i was like yeah wow this is really dark <laughs> that always really is dark. like it boggles my mind or blows my mind because it's i'm always like what the heck they show him like die you, you see the lights fade away and he's like with his mouth open dead yeah, spoiler yeah. alert for anybody who hasn't watched this episode yet <laughs> Sorry. and then it's sad also because fee sees him die that's like that would you know that would impact me <laughs> oh yeah a happy yeah. note <laughs> we get the greatest magic trick ever yeah as jimmy brought up earlier his so the soul of mr defranco has gone from here to there and he magically goes in his soul goes into james gar's body yeah he was accepting a gift Oh, going along with what you were saying about Jack and Fee's connection, um, remember, like, toward the end of the episode, they were actually having their connection where Fee was basically admitting defeat, and then Jack was admitting defeat, you know, that there's nothing we can do for him, and there's nothing they could do for James Gar, and then James Gar overhears their conversation, and he's like, I want to meet your friend. And that's when Jack starts to realize Mr. DeFranco is coughing and starting to pass away, and then... Here comes James Gar with a gift to offer. I thought that was so sweet. Yeah, and it's also a nice touch that Jack is the one who runs out of the room to get a nurse for his friend because he's of course. Okay, <laughs> always on the side of science and not the person who was in the room when the real magic happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to miss it. Of course, he's going to leave as soon as the paranormal thing happens. <laughs> Of course. He's Jack. He can never be there when the weird stuff happens. If he does, we have to erase his memory. <laughs> exactly. Flashy thing him. <laughs> uh, Men in black reference. Yeah. Jack, of course, felt really bad about not being there when he died. Um, 
It was heartbreaking, really. But it was nice that, uh, I guess, Mr. DeFranco and James Gar's body comforted him. <laughs> kind of weird, though. <laughs> that is the weird yeah. part where, like, Jack thinks that Mr. DeFranco was dead. James Gar gets up and he does this magic trick to kind of hint that, hey, I'm still here. Don't be sad. And then, like, he talks about going to see this little girl in Florida, his <laughs> granddaughter. I always wondered, how is that family going to react to this stranger claiming to be their grandfather? Yeah. <laughs> that has some pretty wild implications. <laughs> I don't know what the writers are thinking when they wrote that. <laughs> yeah, they, he, they shouldn't have made the granddaughter reference at the end. They should have just, like, let it go. But I like that him like doing the extra magic trick where he stole the Gabe necklace from Jack and then did a magic yeah. trick with it. But it was cool that um, you know, that kind of went along with Jack's miracle speech at the beginning. That like mm -hmm. he kind of got to realize the miracle came true in that moment, but really not believe it. Maybe knowing Jack. Yeah, I don't think Jack really believed it. I think Jack thought that Mr. DeFranco was gone and, oh, hey, this guy does magic tricks too. Hey, he knows about my necklace. That's weird. And then probably didn't think and, too much into it. And who does he know in Florida? <laughs> <laughs> because remember, like, the, the old man, like, Jack knew the old man had a granddaughter in Florida, but he didn't know that James Gar knew anyone in Florida. Like <laughs> Everybody knows somebody in Florida. <laughs> right. Our grandparents. <laughs> Sure. Um, what's sad also is Mr. DeFranco, he's so like, he's basically happy throughout the episode and doing all these tricks and joking, but then like, you know, right before he's going to die, he's suddenly saying how, you know, he doesn't want to leave or be gone. And I think, uh, he says like, I don't know if there's another world out there mm. or something. Oh, yeah. He he says the words another world. And yeah. I, <laughs> I wrote it down, yeah, that was a, definitely a reference to, like, um, a looking for another world. He says he loved being in love. Maybe there is another world, but I'm sure gonna miss this one. And then it reminded me of the lyrics, looking for another, you know. So, yeah. Aw, it was so sweet. That was a sad part. I could cry on that part, you know, <laughs> definitely. Aw. That's another example of how the writing on the show was so fantastic that you have those subtle in references to the other episodes of the series and other elements. That we're still like loving seven, you know, like all these years later, almost 20 years later. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. God, I love the show so much. I want to cry. I know. I know. <laughs> so weird fans. We'll like burn our candles together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never give up on so weird. So, something about this something about this episode that I question is when Jack is first talking about miracles, um, Mr. DeFranco says, you know, miracles save that for someone with more time on the meter. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, well, the soul, like his soul still got saved even though he's old. So I'm like, does that make sense but, in this episode? <laughs> well, as if maybe it does a little with him as an old man, because in his knowledge then, all he thought was, I'm going to die, I'm just going to die, and I don't know what, what really is to come. You know, we, none of us really know. We have hope, but we don't know for sure. But he did know he was going to die, so... <laughs> I think it also goes along with the idea that he was an old man, so he lived a full life. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he figured, give it to somebody who hasn't lived a full life yet. But yeah. then I also, I do get sad that um, James Gar's soul, you know, was never saved. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Maybe he went to heaven. Maybe go. his soul is in another world. Yeah. <laughs> Back in 84, he passed away in 84, maybe, when he got frozen. Because remember, Fee was like, maybe something happened to him while he was frozen. And then the doctor had said that she had created a new form of vitrification that didn't affect the brain cells. So maybe she was wrong and she failed in that way, that her form of vitrification failed and it did affect his brain cells and he did die. 
1984. And so he wasn't there. His, his body was basically like an android or an autonomous robot without a spirit, no spark. Mm -hmm. Could we classify James Gar as a zombie? Because so we've yeah, done vampires probably. and werewolves, but never a zombie episode. But James, I, the story of James Gar, this is kind of zombie-ish. Well, actually, I I don't want to. Well, I could correct you because the episode Boo. Mm. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> The Walking Dead. I forget about Boo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can't just erase that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never mind. I was like, wait, see Ernst Hart, and then um, uh, Henry Winkler. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's interesting because he says, sorry, back to if James Gar's a zombie or what, whatever. He says he doesn't <laughs> hunger or thirst. He doesn't need to sleep. Oh, oh that mm. makes it more weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I so. think you might be able to classify him as a zombie. <laughs> but he doesn't <laughs> hunger, so he doesn't hunger for human brains. Right? Except for well, maybe his own if he's Twilight's, dead. <laughs> Twilight's vampires sparkle in the sun and Anne Rice's vampires burn to a crisp. <laughs> you know, like, I guess it's all in the, you know, what type <laughs> of zombie is it or what type of creature is it? You know, who's writing this story, I guess. Maybe this is one that we should just go on Twitter and bug the writers. Is James Gar really a zombie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Zach has an opinion on this. So I'll we'll have to ask him what he thinks. <laughs> We'd like to hear that. Yeah, he's gonna be like, darn, I missed the zombie episode. <laughs> Mr. DeFranco, I thought it was cool that he was in like some Disney movies like Cool Runnings, and he's also in Stephen King's Dreamcatcher, which I just watched that and I didn't know he was in that. And um he is for like X Men fans, I don't know, he did a voice in X Men Evolutions, he was Mastermind's voice. So that was kind of a cool reference to like to know that. Um and then James Gar character, um, I don't know if you guys know, he was in I, Robot, and he was also in Watchmen. Mm -hmm. But, um, and oh. the new Flash show, and, yeah. So, and did you guys know he was in the Butterfly Effect 2 with Eric Lively? That was kind of cool. Really? Yeah. There was a Butterfly Effect 2? You haven't seen it? It's Eric Lively, he's the lead character. You have to watch well, that. Lead. It's so good. Well, yeah. I do have to watch it. I didn't know that it existed. Much less that so in it. I knew it existed. I love the first one, but I didn't hear good things about the second. <laughs> so that's why I, I never really saw like it. it. I feel like it kind of stands on its own. Like it's its own little thing. And if you watch it, I think you can appreciate it. If you did like the first butterfly effect, I even like the third <laughs> butterfly effect. Like I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> like I like those. <laughs> They're good. <laughs> the only thing I've ever seen Eric Lively in was that's so weird was that movie where he raped Kristen Stewart, and that just made me all kinds of uncomfortable. <laughs> Aww, he was in a, he's in a new Tyler Perry movie, um, the Christmas movie, and I was happy to see him in that. Uh, one more thing about the James Gar actor, uh, which we mentioned before, but he was in the pilot episode of So Weird as the club manager, so he was in of Family course. Reunion. <laughs> Oh, That's and one funny. more thing that I just thought of now that I haven't thought about in years was the first time I read Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, which is before the movie came out, when I pictured Gilderoy Lockhart, I was picturing James Gar. <laughs> I don't know why, but I did. <laughs> that is an interesting thing I've until now. <laughs> oh, I wanted to say I would love to have that angel necklace if they were to sell it. I wonder was it made specifically for the show or does it exist somewhere like is it a design of a necklace or I don't know but I really wish that if Disney was open to actually using so weird as in selling the show again having merch for it we could have so much awesome stuff in terms of so weird merch like fee rings, angel necklaces, PKB tour jackets. Aww. Like, mm -hmm. I would it would be, be so amazing. So, yeah, Remember so when amazing. they came out with, like, they came out with that season three merch, like, of the voodoo doll and the, the Ouija board and... Was that real uh, what merch? What else did they have? 
I don't know. Like, was I think, I think it was some kind of sweepstick thing. I don't remember. Oh. Okay. I it yeah, I think they were stuff. selling it. Maybe it never got off the ground. Like, it was promotional, but then never got, you know, any merchandising. Um, so this episode, it was, the story was by Doris Egan. I don't really know what the difference is. Teleplay by Doris and John Wiseman. And I think, oh, uh, John Wiseman. I I forgot what he said about this one. I don't have the document up, but I know that he said that Doris did majority of everything. Yeah, I don't think he said anything about this when I looked it up the other day. He just said that he came in at the very end and kind of, uh, you know, polished it up a little bit. Yeah. She had to leave. So. So I looked up um, Doris, and she's done some, or she's written for some big shows like. Dark Angel, Smallville, House, Black Sails, okay. Rain, and she's also Rain's produced. Big... Yeah, she's also produced a lot of things like House, also and NCIS, Smallville. So, did she do wow. any other episodes of So Weird? No. Huh. So I really? guess that explains this why this episode stands out as being kind of different from the rest of the series and being. Having a much more somber theme and tone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how they're just in one lo they're in one location the whole time. Yeah, that's another good. Yeah, point. the hospital's like almost a character in the episode. <laughs> it's probably my one complaint about this episode, because for seasons one and two, it the show has a more realistic setting feel to it. And then season three is the one with all the bright colors, except for this hospital. This hospital belongs in season three. <laughs> <laughs> Their first attempts at changing Disney. It, it was subtle. I guess they needed something lighthearted about this episode. They were like, hey, let's paint it bright colors. Kids won't know what we're talking it. about. It'll look great. They killed a guy <laughs> with purple walls. Yes, yeah, so that makes it okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. That really was like so deep. Like, just imagine. Sometimes people need therapy. Seeing somebody pass away, and Fee and Jack have like really been through a lot, and like with their dad passing and everything else they've seen and gone through. Like, Fee found a dead body in the sacrifice episode. You know, like it's just yeah, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of, um, you know how dark or whatever it got there at the end. Do you all remember this episode airing very much? Because I, this is the one episode in seasons one and two that I have no memory of watching. And we don't have very good quality of it. So I'm wondering mm -hmm. if it aired that often. And if it was, if not, was it due to the subject matter? What do you I think? I would think so because I really, like, I love this episode so much. I feel like maybe I'm fake remembering watching it on TV. <laughs> because I don't think it aired that much on Disney. Same here, yeah. I'm like, I've seen I, it has a little Disney okay. logo and everything. I don't remember, yeah. That's crazy. Don't know. Yeah, because when um, I rewatched the show in like 2008 for the first time in a while, I was like, how do I not remember this episode? I remember all the other episodes from the first two seasons. And I gotta be honest, like, when I watched it, I didn't understand the ending when I was. 18 very well like I was like what just happened <laughs> you know do I need to spell out for me so I don't think as a kid I would have had any idea what was going on at the end and it probably would have just been to me like oh my god that guy died How that? <laughs> you know yeah. yeah that's what I would have taken away from this episode so I wonder if they got complaints about it I don't know well I read a ring of endless light when I was 11 and it deals with the same themes and the same idea as chirogenic so that was my first introduction to it and when I finished the book like my entire worldview changed I was like so somber and depressed for like weeks after I put that down and then I just went back and read it again because I I don't know there's just something about this topic and this question about what makes us human what do we have souls mm -hmm. And just the whole idea of it and how do you deal with the end of life? Do you try to cling on for as long as you can or do you let go? 
I loved pondering those things as a, a an 11 year old kid. So I don't remember watching this episode for the first time. But I do remember around 2007 when I got into my first so weird rewatch. As soon as I saw the theme of this episode, I was like, oh, that's so cool. It's just like a ring of endless light. And again, it brought up all the same thoughts and left me deep in my thoughts for a long time after. It's really deep. <laughs> but beautiful. I mean, I definitely think it's important for all of us to ponder that. You know, just it's sad, you know, that death is like all we have to look forward to. And where we do ponder, like, is there something more? Is there like a higher intelligence? Is there another place we go? What? what comes after this you know it's um it's very beautiful but then again it's tragic at the same time yeah but it's all part of what makes us human absolutely definitely i hope that fee and jack like did something fun after that <laughs> <laughs> well jack did try his hand at doing the magic trick Oh yeah, he was working on some magic. Yeah, they they left kind of positively before they got on the bus. Yeah. yeah. All right, so are you ready to go into our ratings for this episode? Sure. Yeah, so. Sure. Who's gonna go first? Ladies first. <laughs> okay, so rating it, I do really like it a lot, um, especially because if you know, mainly it focuses on Jack and Fee and how they deal with things, and I love the characters and I love emotions and I love sad stuff <laughs> so I would rate it a 7 out of 10 7? <laughs> 7? Would... That is a C <laughs> That is average No, I would have given it more if there is at least some Rick mention or something to do with Molly Was Molly's excellent parenting advice not enough for you? I wanted the to do a little bit more. Helping them, that's not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm disappointed in you. Uh, there's gonna be bonus it's bonus rating. on this bingo on this bingo card. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Instead of Zach, it's me this time. <laughs> yeah. Well Zach's not here. Um <laughs> yeah. I, I give it two thumbs up, definitely. Uh, I do really like this one. As I said, I don't have a lot of memories of watching it. Uh, actually, none. But um, I think it's a very touching episode. And the ending did make me a little emotional. So there's another check on your bingo card. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, I actually think this episode has some really great acting, too, from uh, Patrick Levis and Cara Delizia. Um You know, I know a lot of fans talk about maybe the ending of Strange Geometry being Kara's finest acting moments, but I kind of more appreciate the quieter emotional moments from her, and uh, we see that on display in this episode. And I guess, you know, just seeing Jack and Fee dealing with um, these things and also supporting each other is really nice. As I've said before, that's my favorite relationship on this show is uh, the sibling relationship between Jack and Fee. So, yeah, definitely two thumbs up. Gold star for you, Emily. (laughs) (laughs) I would definitely give this episode 10 out of 10 because it's rare for a kid's show to delve into such heavy themes, and so weird does it beautifully. And I love it when a kid's show never talks down to its audience. Like, we have Molly being an A-plus parent giving life advice that I still apply to this day about how loving people is every bit as important help as you could possibly give. And you've got nice Jack and Fee bonding. You've got a little bit of humor, good storyline, good references to other characters and aspects of the show. Solid 10, 10 out of 10. Wow. So I guess, you know, Kathy, Kat, and I have all given out 10 out of 10s now. Is that right? No, Kathy gave it 7. No, 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 for at least one episode. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah. What was yours for, Kathy? I can't remember. Um, <laughs> I think it was Strange Geometry. Gotcha. 
Gotcha. And mine was for Rebecca, so. And then I think uh -huh. Nightmare also. What's your rating, Jimmy? I think I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10, just because it wasn't, like, one of my favorite episodes. Um, I, I really enjoyed that it had to do with the soul and kind of what happens to us after we die, but I definitely have more favorite episodes, so I think it falls with an 8 out of 10 for me. I don't know exactly why, but that's what I give it. <laughs> yeah, I can see that because this episode isn't important in terms of the overall story arc but it's by far the best standalone episode of the series. And there's just something and about it's it that's so powerful even to this day that I just love it with my whole heart. It's hopeful in reference of Rick as well, you know, just because he is passed away and the whole kind of premise of the show is Fee searching for Rick. And so just the subject matter of the show is really hopeful to the watcher, I guess, when we were expecting to get some kind of resolution on Rick's story. So in that sense, it's kind of hopeful that like, oh, miracles do happen. Hopefully, Fee will get to resurrect her father. <laughs> but nope, that never happened. <laughs> Only in the, the alternate universe uh, season. <laughs> but that, that also raises an interesting question that will, if he did get resurrected, would his soul be returned to his old body or would it be attached to a new one? Mm. And mind blown, what about the episode Strange Geometry where Fee actually made the choice not to resurrect him when that man offered? Yeah. So, yeah, that going along with your question there, like about his soul, like would it be attached? Would it be evil? Would it be, you know, like it's not right to do that. It's not the proper mm -hmm. law of nature, you know, to bring them back. So. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> but then the question arises again with the Banshee episode and the alternate season, was he taken before his time? I think it right? says that he was taken before his time in Destiny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In Destiny it was like, saying that, yeah. Oh, all these questions that we can <laughs> have. It's crazy. That we'll never get answers to because the real know. season three never happened. Yay! Aww. Oh. In our hearts, it happened. Hmm. I couldn't imagine. It's not enough. <laughs> could you imagine the Disney CGI of like Fee going to hell? Like what that would look like? It would probably like look like the episode when she goes in. Remember when the baseball went into that alternate universe? I wonder <laughs> if like hell would kind of be all like fire like that or something. Yeah, I think they just use red lighting and like yeah. have a really basic <laughs> bear set somewhere. <laughs> I think they'd have like demons and dead corpses and <laughs> skeletons reaching out for her and stuff. Oh my gosh, I wonder how dark they would have gone. <laughs> um, and then bashing on Disney some more. Mm -hmm. Disney would never have an episode now, like in any show, where they focus on like two old men. <laughs> True. So it's always focused on the kids, it's on the adults. It's what do you mean? Really ridiculous. Just adult relationships as they're portrayed in Disney today, in Disney Channel. Mm -hmm. um, they're not given the limelight as much, and it is what they're saying. I guess. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. true. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying, because this episode was focusing on the two old men, DeFranco and Jagar. Yeah. Okay, rating time? No, we already did that. Feedback yep. time. So we actually didn't get that much during our little hiatus. But we did get three comments. Um, two of them are from Melissa on YouTube. And she commented on our Banshee episode, saying... I was re-watching this one a couple of nights ago with a friend and noticed something I never noticed before, which gave me a crazy theory. At the end of the scene when Fee is talking to death and looking, at into, and looking into the light, you can see her great-grandmother's face fade into her own. It's very subtle, enough so that I've never noticed. What if Fee is living through her great-grandmother's history and all this has happened before, several generations ago? It's an interesting thought for sure. My friend also caught it and thought that might have been implied. I do remember that, but that's interesting. That's a good question. 
beautiful thought. I, th um, mm. I thought there was something about Fee being a reincarnation of her grandmother at some point. Do you I thought that, that was just like a fan who came up with that idea because Jack was the reincarnated knight. I okay. thought Fee was just named after her great grandmother, so that's the connection between the two. And also how the Banshee recognized her and how the Banshee first called her Fiona and then Fee says, Fee, Fiona was my grandmother. Mm -hmm. she, he mm -hmm. The Banshee does say we have met before Fiona. Does she just look like her grandma? I don't know. Uh, maybe, or, maybe, yeah, maybe just maybe smelling the blood. The blood. That's what I gathered, like, that she was just, like, you know, through the lineage, not necessarily a reincarnation of her grandmother, but carries her blood, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. It's a good theory, though. Yeah, I like that theory. We should and have then... fan fiction to explore it further. <laughs> and she also commented on the Avatar episode. Uh, she said... I was watching a few episodes with the friend who's just getting into the show, and I was ironically telling her about Chrysalis, and I knew it was supposed to address Carrie's drinking problem, but wondering what the weird element would have been. I had a theory that it would be similar to Fall in a way, where there was a serious Molly Fee stuff going on on the side, as well as Ned and Sam's childhood friend haunting them. That was the only way that it would make that it would make sense, in my opinion, unless it ended up like the beer bad episode from Buffy, which was just a terrible episode. Avatar ranks pretty low for me too, definitely in my bottom five episodes. It feels like a filler episode with no real purpose, which I hate. I honestly forgot, forget it exists until it comes up in a rewatch. Pretty sure I have said the same thing about Shelter, LOL. Hmm. Yep. <laughs> well, the beer bad episode of Buffy is terrible, so if it had ended up like that, it would have been terrible. God, that's just the worst, yeah. And I, I do have fears that if the episode had actually aired, it could have played like that, so. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the weird element would have been for that one. It was the worm. No, oh, yeah. yeah. The, he <laughs> swallowed the worm and it turned into a butterfly, and that was his it, addiction, right? That Oh, or, chrysalis. <laughs> yeah. So the oh the gosh. weird part would have been the swallowing of, like, his addiction turned into a butterfly or a moth or something. Yes. I think. I haven't read that for years, but that was, that was, would have been an amazing episode. Mm -hmm. I agree. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah. And then from Andrea for Avatar, she said, this podcast does not disappoint me at all. I always appreciate differing views on the So Weird episodes because they broaden my viewpoint on the series and even help me notice things that I never noticed or thought about when I rewatch episodes. It helps me look deeper into the series, which I enjoy because I have never loved a show so much as I have this one. Does the James Gar episode move any of you to tears? I love that Fiona and Jack reach out and connect to perfect strangers while Carrie is in the hospital. The acting is so wonderful, especially on Patrick Levis' part, and I tear up when Jack finds himself upset over Mr. DeFranco's illness, and Fiona begins to cry when she realizes that James Gar will have nothing when he leaves the hospital. Although it makes me happy that Mr. DeFranco received a second chance at life, I worry about the idea of him going to see his granddaughter in Tampa because she will not recognize him since he is in a different body. <laughs> I also love it when Jack pulls out Gabe's necklace and confesses his belief in the possibility of miracles. It's also interesting to look back on this episode after so many years because I now recognize Sheila Larkin, who stars on The X-Files as Dana Scully's mother. Where was this person during the podcast? <laughs> That's amazing. We um, always ask ourselves that because she always <laughs> knows exactly what we want to say. <laughs> yeah, that was like a little summary. She's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. So yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for the feedback. We really appreciate it, and we love hearing everybody's perspectives on the show. Yeah, and I really love hearing when it's very op opposing or you know opposite views. Like when we don't like an episode. But then there's a whole bunch of fans that do, for example, Lost. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And um, I know oh, I love that episode, guys. I love <laughs> that with, with Dionne Warwick. Oh my god, yeah. I cry on that episode with Kyla Pratt. Oh, I love that episode. <laughs> For some I reason, like, like, yeah, I think it's okay, but I don't think it's that great to me. And then I think Zach maybe felt the same, and we just weren't hyping it up that much compared to like everybody else that likes that episode. Were fans expressing dismay? <laughs> I know there's going to be more coming up. So, yeah, <laughs> that's interesting. Nice. <laughs> Season and, three yeah. is going to be fun. Mm-hmm. It'll be very interesting. And I do wonder if we'll get, um, like, you know, different fans that will start listening to the podcast. With season three? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, maybe. Alex Johnson fans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, I don't know if this is feedback or not, but on our on the so weird uh facebook page that i have for the show and for the podcast um ali marie matheson was going through it and she was liking a whole bunch of stuff and she commented on a post and she said can i get on the next one with a little winky face so we're gonna try to make that happen with having her as a guest so if anybody has questions um, you know, send send it our way. Yes, please. Uh, just as a refresher, Allie Marie Matheson was an executive producer on the show, and she also co-wrote episodes with John Cooksey. They worked as a team. So, I mean, we've had a lot of communication with John Cooksey, but Allie Marie Matheson knows just as much about the show as John Cooksey, so we can get a lot of insight from her. Um in a different perspective. It's very exciting. Yeah, and it's a huge honor to have her paying attention to the podcast because she was such a major part of making the show so awesome in season one and two. Agreed. So yeah, Agreed. if if Allie's listening right now, thanks so much. Um, it's just like a huge deal for us and it's really amazing that a lot, a lot of the crew and cast, like, you know, have taken notice to the fans who like the show and, you know, it's not the first time that someone's listened to our podcast because we've had another writer, a few writers listen as well, which is always exciting and a little scary. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mostly heartwarming because we still love the show and it warms the heart to know that the people involved in making it still do too. Yeah. Even Aww. if Disney doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Disney. And, 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 and like... All the writers are always like, you know, I would love to have a DVD so I can show it to my family. (laughs) Yeah. Dang, Disney. Uh, The DVD just isn't happening at this point. I mean, (laughs) all we can hope for is that it ends up on that streaming service, so. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. I think we're going to have to push for it, guys, but that's further down the road, so. I am still disappointed in John from The Watch app. He said he understood my request. He is a liar. <laughs> Clearly he doesn't understand. I, th- I, think, I think we should have put John from the D- uh, Disney DVD app or whatever on our bingo card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> watch DVD app. Yeah, he should be on there. <laughs> um, anything else we can bring up? Okay. Nope. Wait, what well, are you talking about? Disney Channel. <laughs> is in early stages of development on a Hocus Pocus TV movie. Um, but it's not going to have any of those three people. Oh. oh uh, it will have a new cast and no a new director. Com- no comment. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> um, Ortega, who has directed Disney Channel's two biggest TV movie franchises, High School Musical and Descendants, is, oh, is not involved. Why would they put that in the article? Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so basically, this movie's not going to be good. Basically, and this I- is a tragedy, and we should all be very sad right now. Um, yeah, so everyone's like, no, no, but I don't think it'll be a big deal, because it's just like a TV movie thing. The only way it's going to be a big deal is that it's going to cause an uproar. <laughs> and, yeah. you know... Like, seriously, 
I'm a little offended just at the idea that the original cast isn't in it and they're still alive and well. Who knows what they thought about when they wanted to do this. They, uh, money. They probably can't afford them. Money, yeah. They can't afford them. I don't know. It's going to be on Disney Channel, they bring, right? Which is the... Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Disney. Yeah, it is. So, I mean, Disney Channel's having a lot of troubles these days. It sounds like um, they're falling behind in the ratings. And maybe this is just like a, a really focused effort to give the channel a, a spike, I guess. <laughs> but if, if it was a remake, I mean, I might be on board with a remake, but you know, like trying to cast some new actors and come up with a new updated story. That's kind of cool, even though the, you know, the story still holds up, the film still holds up pretty strongly today. It's not that dated, really, you know, even though some of the costumes and the, at the time are, um, the movie still, everyone still wants to watch it every Halloween. So I would, wa I would watch like a remake, but I don't know about a sequel. Like, why a sequel? I don't think it's a sequel. I think it is a remake. Well, it is a remake. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I could get on board with that, but I hope it's just not too, I hope it's just as dark because something about old Disney, like even so weird up until the so weird time is about when it changed. But, um, you know, they had that dark ambiance to their programming. And now it's like they kind of lost that. It's real kind of glitz and glitter. And um, Well, they I are moving that... out of the glitz and glimmer element. Are they? They're moving away from the laugh tracks. I'm old now. I'm I don't watch Disney. Less often. I'm teaching middle school The only this Disney year, I've been watching yeah. is Raven's House. I've been keeping up with Raven's House <laughs> online. Mm -hmm. Disney I've yeah, been watching yeah. as a 30-year-old. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, stuck in the middle is okay and also Andy Mac. Does that have anything to do with Alex Mac or no? No. Like no. the old Nickelodeon show? No. No, nope, not I've at all. Like, and I'm like, what's that? Yeah. It's okay. by the creator of Lizzie McGuire. Lizzie McGuire, oh, okay. Andy Mac. That's why I think it's that way, but. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Is that it? Is anything else to talk about? I don't think so. <laughs> All right. So thank you everyone for tuning in. This has been another episode of the So Weird Podcast. I'm Kat. I'm Kathy. I'm Emily. And I'm Jimmy. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you for all the feedback. And keep the faith. Never give up on So Weird. Bye.